How's it going everyone? So in this video, we are actually unboxing uh, and taking a look at a very interesting leather saddle that is the Brooks England B17 Narrow. The difference between the B17, which is their classic saddle that made them famous, and the B17 Narrow is very slight. The only difference is the width of the B17 Narrow is 100 uh, let's see it's 151 millimeter compared to the b17 which had a uh, 175 millimeter uh, saddle width okay so we are just going to unbox it here and then i am going to bring my bike over here we're going to try to put this on my bike replacing my current saddle and then take a look at how the saddle looks we are definitely not going through the comfort of the saddle because again Brooks uh, if you guys watched my previous videos I've owned a lot of Brooks saddles all their leather leather saddles extremely comfortable doesn't matter of what shape it is it's comfortable from day one and all their cambium saddles extremely uncomfortable from day one um, so I again I'm really still a sucker for their leather saddles now this one I uh, chose the honey color um, and again vegetable tan leather extremely durable um, this is the again honey color and this is the Brooks B17 narrow um, you can definitely feel the narrowness of the saddle if you haven't owned a B17 um, this is definitely on the narrow side for Brooks saddle line and interestingly if you guys look very closely there are some wrinkles already on the saddle even before first use um, so I'm assuming that the saddle probably has been set on the, sh on the shelf in the bicycle store for a while nobody has bought it um, but it's okay those imperfections are perfectly fine just give them a nice leather treatment you can use Brooks or other leather treatment that you like um, but Brooks of course always highly recommends their own treatment uh, options but this is a very very beautiful saddle this is the b17 narrow um, it doesn't seem oh, actually it does say narrow here so this is a classic brooks stamp on the side and you have the classic brooks stamp um, metal plate on the back every brooks had this metal plate which is pretty nice uh, this one doesn't feature the uh, the nice copper rivet but let me tell you it works just as good as the copper rivets actually i personally prefer those kind of like raw rivets because the copper rivet i had on my old brooks swift titanium um the there are actually weird things developing around the copper rivet area on the saddle on the leather that looks pretty weird so i think the actual those kind of rivets actually works better it it's gonna keep the shape of the leather a little bit better in my opinion okay the copper rivets definitely looks nice but it's definitely not a necessity now this one uh, if you ask me compared to the um let's actually cut it up first So let's just take it out of the box and take a look. But I can already tell this is actually their newer version of the uh, saddle lineup because um, the old saddle, I've never seen this kind of wrapping, but until recently, every Brooks saddle that I bought had this kind of a, um, a paper uh, inside wrapping the saddle okay so this is I would say fairly new um, the box looks like a pretty eco packaged box nothing fancy and on the back there is actually a of course your warranty card and the little leather um, the tension adjustment tool uh, we don't really need to take it out because um, again I'm just gonna use my regular wrench which works perfectly fine um, the difference again this is the classic line so um, it still features the classic wrench adjustments here um, on the newer saddles like the Swift 
um, it's actually a hex wrench that you can adjust from the front, which actually works, in my opinion, a lot better than the classic one because you always need to take a tool with you on the road to adjust. But I doubt anybody, you know, actually adjusts a saddle on the road, so probably not going to make much difference, but that's just something to keep in mind. Um, B17 classic line, this one compared to the Swift actually had more... Um, more of a flap on the side of the saddle, which I personally like because uh, it never was an issue with me. Even with the Brooks B17 that I had before, um, the leather on the side actually kind of hugs my leg pretty good. And I, I didn't get any chamfering uh, around my legs. So that's the reason I kind of like those uh, additional leather on the side. Um, the downside is added weight, I believe. And, uh, but just, uh, you know, a couple more grams. I don't think it's, it's a life or death situation there. Um, but this saddle right off the box definitely looks very, very dry. So I am going to actually give it a treatment first, um, before I put it on the, on the bike. So, um, it can start soaking some of the treatment into the leather and make it, uh, make it kind of rejuvenate the leather, um, just a little bit and uh, let me tell you this is some really really heavy duty leather okay five millimeter thick this is probably the thickest part of the leather that i can find on a cow definitely a very high quality high quality leather saddle in comparison i do some leather working so this is a veg tan leather and this is actually already one of the thicker piece that i i, I use for making leather wallets and some other gadgets but Look at the difference. And this is, you know, of course, for making accessories and stuff. And this is what they use to make the actual leather seat. Vegetable tan, so quite good. And the color is gonna get better. Any vegetable tanned uh, leather, the color is gonna get nice and better with use. Now look at this one. This is a wallet that I made, vegetable tan. Uh, the actual color, the initial color is kinda, I'm gonna show you guys. It's kind of like that. So with use, your your hand grease, you know, gets soaked into the leather. It actually rejuvenates the leather and make it really nice and shiny. Look at that. So this leather with use, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look very nice, okay? And again, this one, a veg tanned leather, and this one doesn't ha doesn't didn't get any treatments yet. Uh, no oil supplied. So it's still in its primitive state, pretty white and pale. Again, with use and with leather, with oil, and conditioner applied, it's gonna get darker and darker with use, just like this one, okay? Now, the rail is actually steel, uh, so is the support. Uh, everything's steel, and there's some interesting elements over here. So, judging by the rivets here, um, it's pretty crude the way that they riveted the leather onto the saddle. Uh, there are actually some extra sides protruding over here. Um, and the rivets itself is kind of broken in a couple areas. Um, but again, this is their entry line or entry level saddle with standard rivets. It's not the fancy one with hand copper riveting. Um, so this is to be ex expected. And they actually offer a 10 year warranty on this saddle. Okay. So anytime something break or if your rares break, if this got split, just um, include your receipts and file a claim with Brooks within 10 years period, they're going to honor your warranty. Okay. So definitely I have full confidence on the durability of the saddle now. And again, did I mention this thing is hard as a rock? It's not going to have much flex, um, but don't worry because the moment you sit on the saddle, you're going to feel like you're sitting on a cloud. That's how those leather saddle feels even during the initial period before it's got broken in. So once with the use, those areas where your sit bone is at, it's going to actually sink a little bit, make the saddle even more comfortable. Okay, so uh, enough said. Mm, let me condition the saddle just a little bit, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put the saddle on my bike and replace my existing one, which is a um, $12 saddle. Okay. So believe it or not, my uh, method of treating the leather is actually using oil and I actually had a video if you guys are interested uh, check out the link on the top um, that's how I uh, treat all the leather piece that I make and so far they've been lasting pretty good and very well conditioned okay so 
the oil I'm using today, avocado oil. And uh, this is refined avocado oil, so it's got a very high melting point. It doesn't have much of the impurity uh, like the olive oil. So in theory, they should last a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter. Like to me, all kinds of oil actually works perfectly fine. Again, this is very dry right out of the box. So we are going to treat it nicely with a oil and have it soaking um, before I put it on the bike. Now the color is going to look very dark at this moment, but I guarantee you uh, by tomorrow they all going to get soaked into the leather. So um, the leather itself gets slightly supple uh, once uh, it gets, you know, rejuvenation from the oil. Uh, and that's how conditioning works. And because Brock's, it looks like they had some special treatments on the top layer, the oil is not even able to penetrate the top layer. Uh, very quickly. So I would assume it's going to soak in very slowly over time. Um, but again, I'm going to leave this top coat there. By tomorrow, they should all be gone. Um, it just takes a lot of time. Um, but the interior, um, right now it looks very dark. It's going to get lighter as I finish applying the, uh, the oil treatment. And so as you can see, some coloring, some discoloring. Um, but I think it's mainly from the underside of, of the saddle. But our goal here, again, is every time I get a saddle, a Brox, I make sure I give it a initial good treatment. So when I go right in the rain, whatever, uh, of course I need to get a rain cover for this one, but. When I go riding the rain, um, I have a peace of mind that it's not going to stretch uh, when the rain comes and it's going to uh, break in actually uh, fairly fast um, with, uh, with regular use. Okay, it already looks much nicer. So what you guys can see now is that the leather gets um, starts to penetrate just a little bit and you can see the imperfections um, on this piece of leather and actually the wrinkle that I mentioned earlier is right here. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the look of the saddle at this point. Again, it, it's, it's a brand new saddle so it's going to take a few days to break in but um, Again, if you find using oil is not to your liking, uh, feel free to use Brooks conditioner. That's what I used before, but since I started leather working, um, I've just been using regular vegetable oil. Uh, nothing wrong with those, um, and uh, they last pretty long as well. So again, your personal choice. Whichever conditioner you like to use, uh, first time getting the saddle, you definitely want to apply some. Okay, um, and. By the way, I think in that um, little envelope where the tool is, they also inclu included a initial uh, little tube of profile that you can actually apply to the saddle as well. So once this dries out, I may just go back to grab that little tube of profile and apply that on top of what I've already applied and further softening the saddle just a little bit. but we're pretty much done initially um, coating the leather. And I'm gonna 
get the rail uh, coated as well just to prevent the rust since this is chrome, um, not titanium. In terms of weight, 510 grams. Uh, the B17 is 520 grams. The extra 20 grams is from the additional leather uh, from the width of uh, added width of the saddle. Okay, so I am pretty much done with conditioning it on the first round. We are going to actually wipe off the excess oil, especially on the top. And let me go find my bike. I'm just going to let it uh, actually precondition for the first night on the bike. Let's see how it goes. Beautiful saddle. Uh, if you guys are concerned about weight, definitely give the Swift Titanium a try. Um, but that saddle is actually discontinued, very hard to find. I, I, I actually sold it a um, couple months ago to some guy and uh, I would say he's lucky because now I kind of regret selling the Swift saddle um, because the value of that saddle actually has increased significantly. But again, to me, I'm not racing, um, so weight really isn't the determined factor um, for me to pick a saddle. I think the aesthetics and the comfort is, is most important for me personally. All right, so the top is uh, wiped off of the excess, and you can see the saddle is beautiful, okay? Um, there's no doubt about it. it. It just looks fantastic. Um, if you guys are into classic looking, you know, stuff, bicycle restoration, uh, Brooks saddle is really um, the best way to go. So as you guys can see, this is my current saddle on my um, road bike. And uh, um, I am just gonna take it off and put on the new saddle and for you guys to see what the saddle looks like um, on the bike. And again, this is my uh, 2008, I believe 2008, uh, Specialized S-Works Roubaix, a very reliable, um, fairly high performance endurance bike okay so again as i said speed is not what i'm going for so i just want the ultimate comfort that the saddle could provide me i've been having fun with this saddle for a little bit um, it's pretty wide and uh, um, what i figured as i ride uh, with my bike more that i don't really need a wide saddle like this i i need to go back to slightly narrower saddles and that is a reason that i got the um the the B17 narrow and I did not get the Swift because um, I had the Swift before and uh, what I don't like is actually Swift got a cutout from here but the Brox actually had the full flap on the side this is actually what I like so I went with the B17 narrow instead of the Swift both of those have very similar width so um, like in terms of personal preference, um, really it depends on what you actually need um, on your setup. If you like the flaps on the side, you should get the um, the B17 narrow. And if you like uh, a racy look, you should get the Swift or uh, maybe even the um, the Swallow um, that Brooks had offered uh, on their website. So right now I am just gonna loosen the clamp uh, the good thing about this clamp is it's actually very easy to remove. Um, let's see. All right, so let's just take a quick look on the weight of the saddle um, or the weight difference. Um, my original one, which is a uh, Velo saddle, and this is weighing at 328 grams. And the Brox B17 Narrow. 540 grams they claimed that the weight of the saddle is 510 obviously that's not the case and also since i've actually applied some of the oil uh, into the saddle the oil gets soaked in which also adds additional weight um, on the actual weight of the saddle okay so now you guys know the actual weight of the b17 narrow is actually 539 grams okay so 
Um, let's actually just put it on here and take a look and see how it looks like. Alright, so uh, with a little bit of fiddling, I was able to get the saddle um, put onto the uh, the bike. And uh, I am just going to show you guys the range of adjustments. Um, so you're able to go backwards this much, go forwards this much. So plenty of range of uh, adjustments, uh, at least on, on this seat post. And of course, the angle-wise, uh, because my seat post actually had a pretty easy to adjust um, settings. I'm able to quickly adjust every detail that I need, but obviously I need to go take a test ride and find the correct position to actually fix the saddle on. Uh, at this point, I am actually just going to tighten it, find a good midpoint, and then we're going to start from there, do some test rides. Um, and see how the saddle performs. All right, so it's pretty much installed. Um, take a kind of general look. So again, uh, endurance bike with a comfortable leather saddle, uh, not speed based. Anybody that looks for speed should look away and look for something uh, specialized offers that are super lightweight and uh, um, maybe at the same time comfortable. I don't know. I've never tried those expensive saddles, so I can't really give you guys a comment. Uh, one thing I know for sure is this uh, B17 Narrow is going to be a comfortable saddle. So um, at the next section of the video, which is going to be the conclusion, um, I'll probably have to go out and ride a lot more with uh, the saddle uh, mounted on the bike to give you guys a final conclusion on what I think about the comfort of again the Brooks uh, B17 Narrow. Um, so stay tuned and see you in the next section. All right guys so um, I know it's been a while since I did the unboxing of the Brooks B17 saddle and uh, I the B17 narrow of course um, so I want to give you guys the final update and the conclusion on how the saddle performed uh, during the last few months of riding and uh, uh, I did rode probably a little bit more than a thousand miles on the saddle and uh, I have to say again um, based on my previous riding with all my broke saddles it has been extremely comfortable um, as you can see, I never actually rode any cycling shorts when I go out and do my rides. And my rides usually range from um, short rides of around 7-8 miles to uh, medium rides of around 30 miles or so. Um, again, just uh, never wore any cycling shorts. It's always on padded and uh, the, that's one huge advantage of the leather saddles which is the comfort of riding the bike without a dedicated cycling shorts and for for that really kudos to the leather saddles it's extremely comfortable and uh, in terms of care um, for the last few months I've probably applied the profide for about twice um, on the saddle and as you can see for the amount of riding I've did, the saddle has been extremely beautiful and the color of the saddle actually has dark
darkened a little bit and it's gonna keep darkening as as far as writing goes the more profile you apply um, the more darkening it's gonna get as it ages and in terms of um, the the writing uh, it, it kind of starts to form the the, the pressure points uh, on the saddle of me sitting on the bike and again I'm a fairly lightweight 150 pounds give or take two or three pounds and uh, for about a thousand miles this is what it looks like at least for my riding um, works great for my touring uh, riding style uh, I don't do any aggressive riding so the saddle has been comfortable and actually looks great on my fairly old S works. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's an extremely comfort, comfortable saddle. So what this saddle is great is for people who do a lot of touring rides. Is for people who uh, just hates cycling, dedicated cycling shorts. Um, you're gonna find the saddle very, very comfort, comfortable. And uh, for that reason, uh, that's why I keep riding those kind of saddles. But for people who want a little more speed, who want more aerodynamic, you'll probably want to look for a saddle that's much lighter weight. And I know Brooks in their saddle lines have a few options that's slightly lighter than the B17 Narrow and gives you maybe 40, 50 grams of the advantage. Um, what you're gonna get is a more cut out uh, leather in turn saves weight and more aggressive riding style in their other offerings. Um, you can probably find those out on their website. Um, but otherwise, um, so yeah, if you want to save weight, I had a Brooks Swift Titanium. That was a fantastic um, actually saddle to use because I've actually done a century ride on the Brooks Swift and uh, it has been extremely comfortable without, again, without any padding so far. Um, for the century ride, so that would probably be a better option. Um, just absolutely no complaints. So, if you guys have any questions about the Brox B17 Narrow, uh, feel free to ask me in the uh, comment section down below, and I'd be more than happy to answer those questions for you guys. Otherwise, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe to my channel, and I should have more videos coming out for you guys. Thanks again, and take care.